Good evening. You're watching the world news on the hour, every hour. Three and a quarter million people. So, what's going on? So following the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings, researchers compared the stress levels of people who watched six hours a day of news coverage with people that were directly exposed to the bombings by them or someone they knew being there in person. Watching six hours plus of news coverage was a better predictor of high stress levels than being directly exposed. I just want to try to think about that. People that watched loads of news about it experienced higher levels of stress than people that were directly exposed. The press should obviously be reporting this kind of thing, but it's a problem if the media coverage of a thing is having a more damaging psychological effect on people than being directly exposed to the thing itself. When we encounter a stressful event, like seeing a plane has crashed, our primitive survival-focused brains get us ready to fight the danger or take flight from the danger, the fight or flight response. This brings us to something called the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. This is what regulates our stress response and involves the hypothalamus found in this part of the brain, the pituitary gland found over here, and the adrenal glands found not in the brain but just above the kidneys. When we experience something stressful, the hypothalamus releases something called corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH, that signals the pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. This then travels in the bloodstream to the adrenal glands above the kidneys where it causes the release of cortisol and adrenaline. Cortisol and adrenaline increase your heart rate and breathing rate, getting more oxygen into your lungs, and they increase the level of sugar in your bloodstream to help provide more energy to your muscles. So sure, we see a bear in our kitchen and all of this stuff happens, but does every negative piece of news that pops into our lives cause this? The answer is possibly, to a small extent. There are loads of studies that confirm people self-report high levels of stress, depression and anxiety after consuming the news, but personal feelings don't confirm the whole HPA axis response increased. There are, however, a couple of studies that show people have increased cortisol levels whilst watching stressful films, which seems comparable to the videos we see on the news that show war and natural disasters and widespread sickness. And look at this. This is a collection of structures in your brain called the limbic system, which supports many functions, including behavior, memory, and emotion. The limbic system contains the amygdala, highly involved in processing emotions and fear, as well as the hypothalamus. What's the hypothalamus? Remember the whole HPA axis? Well, the H stands for your hypothalamus, thalamus, which is part of your limbic system. The limbic system and your HPA axis your stress response are connected. In one study, emotionally negative visual images, aren't all images visual, were shown to people during fMRI brain scans which show the activity of your brain during a task. And it was found that these aversive pictures, you know, similar to stuff like this and this, and this increased activity in the limbic system as a whole. Increased activity of the limbic system and therefore the hypothalamus increases the chances of your body entering a stress response. I'm not saying that every negative news story enacts a full-blown stress response. That ironically is how the news would probably report it. But there does seem to be reasonable evidence from both psychological and neuroimaging studies that news consumption can cause a very mild stress response with each exposure. And around 60% of people check the news several times a day. If the news really is causing a mild stress response with each dose, then long-term implications of elevated stress levels are very well established to increase a whole risk of problems like depression, reduced immunity, and heart disease. Anyways, what do we do with all of this? I don't think it's about never watching the news again. We need more nuance than that. It's important to know some of the things going on in the world, but it's the relentless stream that seems to cause this very mild but frequent stress response that can have some very real effects on our well-being. I think there also needs to be greater understanding of the risks of heavy news consumption. Cigarettes and alcohol have health risk warnings on the packaging, but the news doesn't come with any health risks. On the contrary, society actively encourages us to seek it out lest we become labelled an uninformed person. And 
Obviously, some know all of this, but I think a lot of people just consume endless news without considering that it may be having a very real impact on their mental well-being. Please let me know in the comments if you agree with this or disagree with this. And I'm not sitting on a high horse despite knowing about these research studies. I still find myself mindlessly scrolling through news websites. I would also recommend amazing videos by Lad Botton and Johnny Harris that discuss some of the issues that they have with the news. I'll link them below. And if by some euphoric miracle either of you are watching this hi i'm a huge fan anyway thank you so much for watching and check out this video if you want to know more about how tiktok affects your brain please let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you in the next one